Last year, COVID-19 led to lockdowns at nursing homes and long-term care facilities all across the country. Patients were isolated from their families and many died alone. For years, doctors have said loneliness is detrimental to the health of older adults living with Alzheimer's and other dementias. WFMY News 2's Lauren Coleman explored how the pandemic made them even more vulnerable. See, he's got his sash around her neck and she wouldn't let go. They <laughs> Wendy Brenner remembers her mother, Nancy Hellwood, as feisty and opinionated. We had this hanging in her room. We said, remember mom when you met Elvis? A psychiatric nurse and a single mother of three. She was a big reader, loved jazz, the beach, her dogs, like she was like a very strong independent person. At age 78, Doctors diagnosed Nancy with Alzheimer's disease. As the progressive brain disorder worsened, she was moved to a long-term care facility, completely dependent on staff and her family. She was in the facility a total of three and a half years. In the beginning, I would go more like every day just because it was really, I'd take her out, I'd still take her to church on Sundays. That was really important to her. COVID-19 led to lockdowns at long-term care facilities and put daily in-person visits on hold. Nobody anticipated how long it was going to go. For an entire year, Brenner could only communicate with her mother through phone calls, video messages, and window visits. She says the social isolation accelerated her mother's cognitive decline ultimately leading to her death in May of 2021. I called the um, nursing home and I said, I just can't do this. I can't, my mom's lost 35 pounds. She's completely different. She's so stressed and agitated and anxious. She's in a wheelchair all the time. At some point she was just going around and around and around the unit in her wheelchair. Like that's all she did. What was the most difficult part about being separated from your mom for so many weeks? I tell people my mother did not die of the COVID disease, but she did die from the pandemic. I believe that, my sister believes that, like that she deteriorated so much in that year that, you know, she just passed. Um, And she was alone. So I feel bad about that. Sorry. Because <laughs> I just thought I would be there. According to the Alzheimer's Association, 42,000 more people died from Alzheimer's and other dementias in 2020 compared to averages over the previous five years. The social interaction, it's how we connect as humans. And um, for someone living with the disease, FaceTime, Skype, video, they may not understand that they're not watching a television program. They may not understand that this is their loved one and they're, they're working to communicate. Catherine Lambert of the Alzheimer's Association says increased age, communal living, and challenges in practicing safe hygiene made patients more vulnerable. But what we know anecdotally from families is that they have seen the decline in their loved ones, whether that is a decline in ability to speak, uh, ability for mobility, um, or increased agitation. You know, social isolation can increase anxiety and depression. Lambert says the association continues to work with lawmakers to find ways to keep populations safe from COVID while creating opportunities for responsible interaction. This September, Governor Roy Cooper signed House Bill 351, or Clifford's Law. The legislation requires the Department of Health and Human Services Secretary to establish visitation protocols for long-term care facilities during emergencies. I think it's probably a combination of things. Dr. Trey Bateman is a cognitive neurologist at Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. He's spent the last 20 months researching the impacts of stress and loneliness related to the pandemic on cognitive decline. This is a really complex story that brings together the consequences of a viral pandemic, social policy over the last 50 or 60 years in the U.S. health system, uh, and how we globally view treating older adults who have dementia. 
While caregivers like Brenner may have lost loved ones in quality time due to facility lockdowns, she hopes others can find the value in human interaction. I don't know where we're standing with the pandemic going forward, but if we ever have to do things like this, I, I hope they do it differently. Throughout the holiday, the Alzheimer's Association is offering a free virtual program giving advice for a safe and enjoyable holiday season.